Hi, my name is Jan Jansen. I'm basically working since 2016 at GData, and is this loud enough? So, yeah, basically working since 2016 at GData and started also at this time with containers to work. And today I'm here as a container a platform engineer. And basically, why my talk is called We Are Not Mercedes. I think there was a blog post from, uh, I don't know the person directly, but uh, about you are not Google and you are also you are not Amazon. And the idea was uh, probably you don't have to scale something in that amount that Google has to scale. Or, and so don't over engineer. And uh, there was last year at the, at the European KubeCon a talk by Mercedes how they run Kubernetes in production. And I think they run around 1,000 clusters at that time. And we are just running 50 clusters. So, and, and they also use a cluster API, which we are also using massively. So basically, I try to just compare them with us so in, in this way. The rest will be without the Mercedes connection. So basically. I, my fourth key Linux will be start slowly, so yeah, and then uh, embrace open source, uh, be open, prevent pets, and support people. So yeah, the start slowly part, I split it, split it in two parts, is uh, resource management and also cluster management. Basically, uh, we have the problem of like, we have 15 teams and how we can share resources between teams and, uh, and then also how to manage 15, 50 clusters uh, without uh, any major problems. And, and I think we started, beginning we didn't have any knowledge of operators in Kubernetes, so we used our technology we knew. We came from Docker Swarm and we used Ansible a lot at this time. So basically we provision all the team resources with Ansible and at some point we know what we want and we started to build our, we call it team-based management for resources. So basically you can request namespaces by creating a pull request to a resource which is a Kubernetes resource called team and then you get a namespace, which all so we have access by uh, with kubectl, and also have Grafana access all your boards. Uh, we also do automatically uh, alerting stuff, and you get just for your team. And then currently we started, I think half a year or a year ago, with stuff we don't finished yet. It's called groups because we we realized that teams are changing too often. So their names change, stuff change, and also the problem with, we could call it project, but projects are more short-lifted. And uh, I think groups is, is the best way, which is not connected to any term which is used in the company. So basically we don't have a term which is team or, or group, so basically, or project. So group was a good idea, and also we use GitLab today, so GitLab also uses group for, for some grouping of resources or projects. And so what we also wanted to do with the group stuff is we didn't start, so we basically started from scratch. We built all our clusters with, with a cluster API. So we use a Kubernetes, uh, cloud, uh, so the, the uh, native, native Kubernetes. So we have to do all our security stuff by our own. So Basically, we started with uh, Gatekeeper at some time, so, uh, and also uh, introducing changes which are security related are sometimes breaking changes, so it's not that straightforward. So for example, for groups, we could also introduce a network separation between groups or teams which is not in place at the moment. And also, for example, for our upper management, we could just give them uh, View rights at the moment we just have admin rights for, for example, or deployment stuff. So, yeah, there, there are possible things, and also uh, we do the namespace have no prefix at the moment, and uh, 
So basically, we have to uh, also see if there are 15 teams on one cluster. They probably pick the same namespace, so we have to check if someone else wanted to get the same namespace by the same name. So we don't have to prevent it. And there was one idea to just put a prefix in front of it in some cases. Yeah. And if you start, I think there's a cool project today which is called Capsule. Uh, did anyone heard of Capsule? So basically, they do also uh, like multi, uh, they, are, they are more for a single cluster, but they do tenant based uh, separation, which is also which is great because they have also a proxy. And if you know uh, that lists can't be uh, queried if they're, they're, there's an airbag resource, which is called list, and you can't query just some, the part you want. So for example, if you have only access to three namespaces, but there are 15 namespaces, you can get them, but you don't can get a list or a watch on them. So basically, they have a proxy which can do it. Currently, we don't use it, but just a nice idea. And for, for the cluster management stuff, so basically, we want we run it since most since 2020. We started on vSphere, so we all run it all on 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 premise since shortly, and now we st we started with cluster API at this time, and use Ansible in some place, uh, places, for example, for installing base components, which is combined with Helm file and uh, Terraform for for the resource management in vSphere. And today we switch to, to Argo in most cases. For example, we do all of our cluster management with Argo today. In the beginning we used Helm file, so that's a change. And then uh, the slowly part, for example, we have tried to do mostly generic clusters, but uh, on premise we have the problematic of large uh, file system. We don't have it in all places. And so we have uh, K K3S for just like menus or stuff where we need multiple terabytes of data so we can just store it in a, in a different place, which makes the, the setup much easier in our case. And today, yeah, we run multiple cluster API providers uh, in one different cloud and on-premise at the moment. And then, yeah, I think we run a lot of open source stuff. Um, so more than 50 projects, uh, open source project. I don't know the real number. I just did a rough count. Uh, yeah, key projects are Kubernetes, Argo, Grafana, Thanos, Helm, Celium. But I think what uh, did a lot of help us was the operators. So we use operators for, for, uh, for our databases to run on, on Kubernetes because uh, Today, often they are just one project has their own database and they have to manage the stuff. And we did had a lot of people started with Bitnami charts and then, but they had the problem of backupping stuff and we can't manage all of the different deployments they did. So we started to start with operators to just have one set which we control, which allows us to better control all the setups. Uh, yeah, and then, so basically, be open. I'm, I wasn't sure how to say it, but uh, there's this part, if you do platform engineering, you, you just get feedback in a, in a more not obvious. So basically, you hear it during talking with people. Sometimes you have to keep track of pain points to find a solution into the future and uh, and wait before automation and some points. So we basically we had we had uh, an automation for one stuff where we can do deploy stuff in multiple clusters for teams, which is different than we do it. And so today we have a solution for it. So basically we can replicate res Kubernetes resources in multiple clusters and yeah, keep open for, for new projects and always test them. There's great stuff happening all the time. And then 
one thing we have an issue with, I would say, in some parts is that the, the, the classical pets versus uh, uh, cattle stuff. So basically, we have tried to do our clusters more generic, mostly generic. So we do uh, have two region, and then we do network separation for for use cases or for, for security reason, basically. So we have a, we call a green cluster, which is, which is only running for internal stuff. And then we have to, or stuff where we run malware stuff on. So basically we do network separation between these clusters. And then we start, we have tried to do more generic names for the clusters, but people start to use them as, I wanted to boil to this cluster, but they should, shouldn't, choose one cluster by, by the name. So, so what we, you can do is use custom cluster per, per use case, which has an overhead here. Yeah, it's more pets than kettles, but it don't uh, have the problems of noisy neighbor if just one people want to, to use just one clusters. And then also what will, would be really interesting is to do basically hide clusters away in, in all ways, so basically if, if people request a namespace, it just, they just get a namespace. I, I think this would be really great, but it's uh, overhead. So basically hiding away in, in Argo or hiding that away in, 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 in kubectl. So basically you get a name for, for your namespace and then there's some cluster behind it that would be great, but the cluster could be shared, but that's more overhead than just having a single cluster per use case. Uh, and then at last, support, support, support. Uh, I think in platform engineering, you do more support than if doing no new stuff, I would say. So supporting people is, is important because some will use the new stuff they get uh, with Kubernetes, but some will wait and wait, and you have to help them and bring confidence, and that will help. And also documentation. I think uh, IT guys always like to document. <laughs> so, but yeah, we started documentation, I think, two, one year or two years ago, and it really helps also for the internal stuff, but also in the external stuff. And then, and for the security stuff, we started to introduce breaking changes, so basically requiring read-only root file systems and also user, uh, non-root users, and you have to support people, give hints how to set it up, and yeah, support. <laughs> <laughs>